We'll defer to chair and Alternative alternate to vice chair, right? <laughs> Meteoric rise. I know. Yeah. Joe carries. <laughs> Okay, we'll uh, open the agenda for the planning board meeting with June 5th. I'll begin with roll call. Uh, Alvin Clark. Here. Jeff Delisle is not here. Tom Crow. Here. Jane Pennington is not going to be here. Kevin Rogers. Here. Karen Palmasano. Here. And Bluestein is expected to be here. And Rick Tainer is here. So we have, we have five of us here. For, for the first agenda item. Uh, so, the first agenda item is a public hearing for Casual Brothers Realty, uh, the 22 Henry Graff Road, and scheduled for the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the board. It's great to be here. Um, Lisa Mead, Mead, Teller, and Class of 33 Street, and your report on behalf of the Caswell Brothers Realty LLC and Coach Club LLC. And with me are Caswell Brothers, as well as Ricardo Rapatucci, who is the owner of um, Coach Club LLC. This is a property at 22 Henry Drive Road. You can go to the next thing. Um, this is a request for a special permit for indoor health and recreation facility. There are currently um, three. Um, units at 22 Henry Graff Road. Uh, currently, one includes the Vanguard, uh, Vanguard Key Club. The other includes Fuel. And there's a proposed coach club to go into the um, Mill 77 space, um, which is a retail trade space. Uh, you'd be interested to know that Vanguard Key Club is there with a variance that existed since around 2017, I think. Um, the fuel is there as a, an educational facility by right, also long time standing. These were both in there before the Caswells purchased the property. And Mill 77 was allowed um, as a retail by variance also in the property. So we were originally coming in, frankly, for the coach club under the new recreational use. Um, however, at the urging of the zoning enforcement officer, uh, she suggested that we might just repurpose the whole building and get special permits for everything, uh, which made sense, frankly, uh, but particularly for Vanguard, which is there under a variance and had a very onerous parking requirement, kind of crazy parking requirement, frankly. Um, and so we agreed that it would make more sense to have everybody there under the existing, the new 406 use um, of health and recreation, indoor health and recreation. So that's why we're actually here for all three uses, even though Vanguard currently exists, as does Fuel. And so the only new use in that site would be the new Coach Club use. Um, just, just to clarify, um, so are you asking for, is it one special permit where for the entire building where the three uses or is it multiple special permits? I think that's fine. Which is simple. Yeah. yeah, it's simpler. I think that that's fine. What we would one special permit would cover the entire building. I mean, we meet all the requirements, so I'm not particularly concerned about it. Thank you. Um, so, um, and frankly, that would be good if later on one of the uses switched out to another indoor recreation facility came in with no additional issues. So um, the uh, here's the site plan, and um, Graff Road is to your right. Um, and many of you see that initial parking at the top of the building there when you pull in. But what you don't really see is all the parking in back that exists because it's really hard to see from Graff Road. So you can see there's 101 parking spaces, I think, on the whole site. Um, we need half of those to satisfy the requirements of 
the, um, the use 406. So that's the existing site. Uh, next slide, please. So in the, uh, the building itself, um, you have unit one, which is Vanguard, which is that really dark colored one right up front. Um, unit two right behind that is behind it. It's kind of weird. Um, unit two right there. So yeah, sorry. That's the co new coach club space, which was retail 77. Um, ML 77, excuse me. And unit three behind is where fuel is right now. Uh, next slide. Next. Slide. So um, as I said before, unit two is going to be a coach club. Um, it's indoor golf. Um, that offers leagues, tournaments, uh, member events, extension coaching programs. Uh, they have a, a program up in um, Hampton right now. They offer this up in Hampton, so they want to offer one right down here. Uh, they offer the Trackman Golf Simulators with over 180 golf courses and approximate um, 432 square feet of putting green. So I don't know if any of you watch golf. I'm a big golf fan. So, but if you watch golf and you see, um, when you're watching the tournaments, you see the tracking thing that follows the ball. So that's what this is. And if any of you have been up to the Newbury Golf Center, they actually have those at each one of those little stanchions. I don't know what they're probably called. So at each one of those, they have those. And so they're gonna have those here. It's pretty cool. You can put them on an app and you can track your, your progress or lack of progress if you're me. Um, and um, so it's part of the, the whole situation. Um, the finished space will also offer uh, each golf simulator and a lounge area, uh, notably the applicant who uh, has won a number of awards uh, and recognitions and certifications of the 2022 New England PGA Teacher of the Year um, will offer lessons as well um, and coaching to members and non-members alike. Um, and therefore, it meets the definition of the uh, indoor <laughs> recreation um, and health, or health and recreation use. The second is Vanguard's 24-hour gym. Uh, it currently operates under uh, the use variance, as I indicated. It's a gym, and you have to be a member of it, and it operates inside, and therefore it meets the health and recreation indoor use. Uh, and third is a fuel fitness, um, which offers classes in fitness and um, exercise classes and training, and it, too, uh, meets the use requirements of the Section 406 definition. Um, it's interesting to know that a number of communities are adding what we would call um, often is being used as experiential uses um, as in, in addition to the indoor and recreational use. So you're kind of on the cutting edge having adopted this to allow these kind of uses in these areas. Um, the parking requirements, let me go to the next um, page. Oh, so let me just show you. So this is the, uh, the indoor, these are the plans for the area of the um, coach club. And you can see the simulators kind of at the top with the seating behind, there's the putting green in the middle. You've got the bathroom facilities on the right-hand side. Uh, next slide, please. And this is just a blank square footage of the same area. And the next two slides are the same, Andy, so you can go to the next one. There we go. Um, let me just also add that um, on, as far as the parking is concerned, um, the requirements for parking for Coach Club uh, is 11 spaces. Um, that's because it's based upon a thousand, one space per thousand square feet of court area or other game play areas. So that's 11 spaces uh, for Coach Club. Vanguard is required to have 27 spaces, and Fuel is required to have 13 spaces. So that the total requirement is 51 spaces. And as I said, there is actually 102 spaces provided on site. So all of the businesses meet the 406 definition. Um, all dimensional requirements are met for the property and all parking requirements are met for the property. If you go to the next uh, slide, please. And one, if you go one. So the next um, part of the special permit is of course to meet the general special permit requirements under um, 10H7. Um, and I'll just run through those. Uh, the first is that the use is listed in the table of use regulations. And of course, as you know, you've amended that at the end of last year to add it by special permit. Uh, the next is that the use is essential or desirable to public convenience and welfare. Here, um, since this was just added, uh, the city recognizes the desirability of indoor health and recreation facilities. Uh, moreover, as you know, that as a growth out of COVID, 
Um, people have desired to see more local um, health recreation possibilities, including indoor recreation possibilities. Uh, Vanguard is a convenient 24 hour gym at low cost to its membership. Jewel provides another alternative of group fitness classes, workout sessions. Um, they all boost the customer's health, uh, including Coach Club offers a modern space for focusing on golf skills, a very um, popular and growing uh, uh, recreation activity, athletic activity, training and practice, as well as space to socialize around uh, the golf, offering a uh, convenient recreational facility. And so um, these all uh, meet the requirement for being desirable for public convenience and welfare. Uh, the third criteria is that requested use will not create any undue traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. Here you had a retail facility, Vanguard and Fuel operating for at least seven years, if not longer, um, and there's not any issues with traffic there. Um, I think it's interesting, uh, even with the addition of the Coach Club, um, if any of you are familiar with the I'm going to say it again, the new competitor of the street, um, that the way people go in and out of the Newbury Golf Center, for example, it's it's very segmented, right? There's not this big line that goes in and out because you go up, you you know, you hit a bucket of balls and you leave and everybody does it at different times. So you never really recognize that there's a problem, any um, problems with traffic. And so certainly um, by adding this and making these all that exist um, under four or six uses, there won't be any um, issues with traffic congestion. Uh, next place, it's the requested use will not overload public water drainage or sewer system or any other municipal services here. There's no change to the building. There's no change to the parking lot. We have, uh, there's no change to Vanguard that exists. There's no change to fuel that exists. And then we have the bathrooms that are added in um, the coach facility, but it's not, they're not locker rooms, they're bathrooms. Uh, the fifth um, requirement is that there are there any special regulations for the use, and the answer is no, there are no special regulations. The sixth is that the, the use will not impair the integrity or character of the district or adjoining districts, and here um, it certainly won't. In fact, the city has made a conscious effort to allow indoor recreation and health facilities in this area. Uh, these are all indoors, too, so the building still appears to be you know, appropriate for the industrial park. That's not changing at all. Um, and so therefore there, you know, there won't be any detriment um, and it won't impair the integrity or character of the district. Uh, the seventh is the requested use will not by its addition to the neighborhood cause an excess of that use. Here, primarily around here, there are industrial uses. Uh, you've allowed the pickleball use down at the uh, New Report Brewing Company, which is not immediately adjacent. And of course you have the rock climbing facility over um, by river walk brewing, but that of course is not adjacent either. And that's there by variance. So there won't be uh, an excess of the use in the neighborhood. The eighth is that the proposed use is in harmony with the purpose and intent of the ordinance. And of course, the ordinance specifically allows this use. It was um, purposeful, a purposeful change last year. Um, and so um, it's certainly in harmony with the purpose and intent of the ordinance. And the last item is that the purpose, uh, the proposed use will not be conducted in a manner that will emit any dangerous, nauseous, or injurious, or otherwise objectionable um, impacts on the area. And of course, um, that won't be the case. Uh, there's no changes. It's all going to be indoors, and um, there won't be any adverse impacts. And so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. And we've asked the board grant a special permit for indoor recreational use for the structure at 22 Bradford. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, just one. Is there any food service? Uh, there will be um, snacks uh, available, like you know, prepackaged snacks, and um, they are they may be applying for a uh, beer and wine license, similar to, I mean, Riverwalk in the. Um, I move to approve the special permit for. Wait, excuse me. <laughs> I think we have to ask yeah. um, for public comment. Public comment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I don't want to be tripped up by that <laughs> inadvertently. Okay, I'll open the public hearing. Is there anybody who wishes to speak uh, to this application? And if not, I will close the public comment the public hearing. Oh. And with that, <laughs> I'll move to approve the special permit for 22 graph. 
I'll say. Um, we do not have anybody online, so so we can uh, do it by all those in favor. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. And we have just five minutes. <laughs> Okay, next item is an informal discussion about mighty five and ninety seven. Yeah. You're, 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 Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and again, just for the record, Lisa Mead, Mead Telling with Post 30 Green Street, and with me is Scott Brown. Um, Hugh is the architect on the project, and Hugh, Hugh Collins. Collins, who is the landscape architect um, on the project, and then John Brock, who is a uh, owner and principal of um, the LLC, which owns uh, the property. So this is unusual. Um, we don't usually do informal meetings or hearings, if you will, uh, with the planning board, uh, but this is a really important project. And um, as you know, we were here during the zoning change and um, the ZBA is gonna get this and they're not used to this kind of project necessarily, um, 6C, right? And it's not really 6C obviously, but they um, they do do special permits obviously, but this, this is a pretty high profile project. And we wanted to get the planning board's input on this to go to the ZBA web um, and to see if there was any changes that we, you know, we thought we should make before we went off to them. We have filed with the CBA, but we're not until the July 9th meeting. So we um, would be able to make any modifications if necessary. Um, this has been uh, in the works for uh, a long time. Um, and importantly, um, Scott and John and John's um, uh, assistant, David, have met extensively with the neighbors on this process and developing the design for the project. And I'll let Scott tell you about all the iterations that went through. Um, eventually, as they moved through the project, I started meeting with them as well. Um, we then worked with the city and um, did a development agreement on the uh, general configuration of the footprint and what would go here. Um, and then obviously that resulted in a zoning change. And um, so here we are today, um, Scott, and Hugh having put pen to paper and developed um, developed plans. So the proposed building is uh, two structures. There's three units in one structure and one unit in the other. So therefore it meets the new definition of multifamily use in the R3 district. Um, the um, property meets all of the dimensional requirements um, of the zoning ordinance. Uh, it's 22,237 square feet of area, 195 plus uh, frontage. Uh, the building height is um, 27.9 feet. Uh, lot coverage is 29%. We're allowed to go to 40. Uh, open space is 39%, which is 40. Um, we use the established front yard setback while we worked with the neighbors to be able to pull the building closer to the street and away from the adjacent residential structures in the back. Inside, uh, one side setback is 10 and a half, where 10 is the requirement, and the rear setback is 22.6. You have to also remember that the front yard in this project is actually State Street because it's the longest front. So the, the rear is opposite that, and then you've got the, the side is on the right side at Upper State Street. Uh, next slide, please. So here is the existing conditions. Um, and you can see the site, it's um, by and large covered with hot top, except for that back berm in the back, if you will. Um, and I think Stephanie would tell you that's what's left of the bridge. It was cut out in the middle. Um, and, um, you know, it, that, that's it. And we all know what it looks like. And I'll show you just to make sure you know. And here is from the opposite corner. 
on State and High Street. Um, and um, the next one is off High Street. So, um, and this is a, a good one to look at. Just hang on for a second, Andy, if you don't mind. So if you look at the rear of this site, um, which is the side yard, but you see that uh, mound goes up in the back. So that is kind of the leftover evidence of what was cut out up there to put the gas station there. Uh, what you're going to see in the design a little bit, Scott's going to show you, is that house that's on State Street right there, the adjacent property, is built into that. Um, is built into that, uh, uh, that that mound. And our proposed structure, the single family carriage house, is also built into that mound, which will match uh, the the property next. Um, next slide, please. Uh, one of the things that we did, and I'm going to hand it off to Scott here in a second, is. When we were developing this, and we also, I might, might add, we met with Andy and Jennifer and everybody a few times as well, is we really wanted to see what the buildings around it, what the, you know, the facade, the length of the frontage was, the masking, to make sure that what um, was being proposed uh, was in keeping with all of the things around it as well. And um, I'll let Scott go over that, but as you can see, neither one of our, if either the facing front, the elevation on North of High Street and the elevation on State Street are actually um, shorter than the elevations of the properties on opposite corners. Um, and that was purposeful um, and driven by design and actually a lot of conversation with um, the neighbors in the city. Um, so with that, because I didn't design what I think is actually a really beautiful project, I'm gonna turn it over to um, Scott to pick it up from here. Great, thank you, Lisa. Scott Brown, the architect for the project, and um, very happy to uh, be here tonight and uh, have the opportunity to finally unveil this, this project to the public because it is something that we have been working diligently on for for quite a um, quite a long time, and we've been very careful about how we've uh, put this together. Um, and what you're seeing tonight is really the product of input many individuals, the hard work of many individuals. And uh, I believe without the input of those individuals, it is possible that we might have something um, a different. So this has been a very important project to me uh, personally. I think it's a very important project to the city of Newburyport. I think it's important that we get this right. And I do uh, believe that with the exception of some uh, minor details, some minor new sands. I do think we have it right, and uh, and as well on its way to being in the next project. Um, so what we're seeing up here on the screen, as Lisa already mentioned, this is a graphic that we put together back, you know, um, last uh, October. Um, this is an update to that graphic, and we put it together in order to sort of really compare this project to some of the surrounding properties. Uh, there's a lot of information on this. Um, and one of the things that Lisa mentioned is sort of the length of uh, the facade of this this uh, thing that we're proposing, and it's uh, and how it compares to sort of uh, a project, uh, the building immediately across from High Street, and also uh, what is the former Knights of Columbus at the front of uh, Pond and State, and uh, the actual facade length that we're proposing it is less than both of the structures. Um, the other data we have on this, we have uh, some footprint sizes. And uh, uh, which is helpful to sort of compare this to, to the other structures. Uh, one of the things that has changed in this since October is this has actually gotten smaller. So the principal uh, primary uh, building uh, that we're proposing is about 400 feet smaller than what we're proposing in October. Uh, the standalone uh, single unit carriage house in the back. Uh, that's virtually the same uh, as what we were proposing in October, but its footprint has has changed slightly. Uh, in terms of the height of the structure, it is the same uh, as it was back in October. Uh, the data we have on this plan, uh, this plan is relative to sea level. You know, so the height of this structure is at elevation 99. Um, and uh, as you can see, you know, from other the, you know, uh, some of the abutting structures, uh, it is sort of right in, in the neighborhood of being comparable to some of the other properties. In fact, it is about seven feet uh, less in height than the former Knights of Columbus building. And um, and it is actually not nearly as tall as the building immediately across 
Cross on High Street, uh, which is actually the tallest, which is the Gambrel, and actually the tallest, uh, you know, tallest structure in the neighborhood. Um, the other data we have on here, what I just mentioned, is sort of the footprint sizes. And um, so our um, proposal includes, you know, two car garages within the footprint. Uh, I think it's really the only um, building in the immediate neighborhood. I can't think of another. Maybe there's one other 104, 108 Street Street, which has garages within the footprints that are shown. So uh, our size there includes those garages. So it's a little hard to compare that size to some of the other structures. So one of the things that I've done is I've uh, extracted um, the square footage of that garage and, and we're about like, you know, 3,275 square feet and just comparing that to the Knights of Columbus building, which is also, you know, a three family, that's roughly 3,500 square feet. You know, so our living space is actually less than the building, building across the street. Can we go to the next slide, please, Andy? So we have a number of photos of just of the neighborhood because it's helpful to kind of understand, you know, the context. We can just sort of go through these really quickly. These are some of, you know, uh, some uh, other properties across the way on High Street. Some brick rentals. <laughs> One fourteen High Street is um, directly across the street, the opposite corner. This is, uh, you know, we're proposing a mansard roof. You know, so this is also a mansard roof, um, a little bit more fancy than what we're proposing. Lovely house. That's the side view of that house, and there's the uh, structure that immediately abuts that. You know, off of State Street. You know, one hundred five Street Street is a brick federal immediately opposite of that. And uh, 112 High Street, this is a side view of this from state, you know, and I believe this to be the sort of the tallest structure to the peak, you know, in the neighborhood. Very, very lovely house. Of course, the next side, this is a, you know, sort of a two-family. That's the front view of that from High Street. What are we high? Four-unit multifamily immediately to the right. Got a sprawling footprint. Can't remember how many units this is, but this is multifamily just to the right of that. And uh, these are the abutting properties on High Street uh, that are on the same side as our project. And this is the immediate Butters House, Stephanie, and uh, Novak, Nikitich. Very, very lovely house. And this is where you can actually start to see um, it's a house that sort of sits high up on the ridge. And you can begin to see some of the uh, challenges that um, you know we've had putting this this project together. There's uh, some uh, extreme grades on the site. Next slide. So we have 123 State Street, and and this is uh, you know up to probably three or four parcels from our property, and uh, this is on here because this is a very similar roof style that we're proposing you know, uh, for our carriage house. It's a two-story uh, structure where the mansard is at the second floor level. So this is nearly, uh, this is a very, very good call for proposing for our carriage house, which is the, the standalone unit. And uh, again, you know, another house with uh, up on State Street, you know, same kind of roof style. You know, one Pond Street, former Knights of Columbus, pretty high building that sits pretty high on the site. And so what we're going to see in the next few photos are some of the structures along High Street, and um, they all sit up really high relative to the side, which is not unlike what we're proposing to do with ours. And they're all dealing with some of the same grade challenges. So, you know, these first floor levels are probably eight to nine feet above the sidewalk, which is very, very similar. <clears throat> And again, a matrix, again, you know, we've got, you know, a primary structure that has three units in, in it and a standalone structure, which has one unit, which we're calling the carriage house. Uh, we have a zoning matrix here, and as Lisa sort of already mentioned, uh, we'll be meeting all the dimensional requirements for this, this property. Next slide, please. So the plan for Millennium Engineering, our civil engineer on the project, um, 
you know, I mentioned that we've got some, you know, extreme grade challenges from that. So from that front left corner to the back right corner of this site, uh, there's 17 feet of elevation change. And uh, so we've had a really challenging time trying to make this work. And as a result, we have a number of, number of retaining walls, you know, on the property. And all of those retaining walls on the left side, as you face it from High Street, are necessary in order to, to you know, execute this project. Um, that um, carriage house building is actually dug into the hill. So the back side of that first floor there is actually, you know, acting as like a retaining, you know, a retaining wall. Um, for the most part, all of the retaining walls that we have up front, you know, on the state and high street sides, you know, they're really there for aesthetic reasons. And I think it's a very elegant way of, uh, you know, addressing, um, you know, kind of the, the extreme elevation changes that we have on the site. Next slide, please. Another plan from Millennium, this is a utility plan, uh, planning to um, bring all of the utilities off of the State Street side and, and um, you know, bring them up uh, our parking court and, and branching off into, into, the, uh, into the units. Next slide, please. Ah, so the money shot. So this is, um, you know, uh, our rendering, you know, uh, taken from the intersection of High and State. And, um, you know, we've done our best to make this sort of as accurate as possible, as possible, but uh, that is a very difficult thing to do. Um, what I can say here is that the building is uh, rendered accurately. So sort of the size and scale and detail of this is uh, exactly what we're planning to propose. Um, the landscaping, however, is sort of another, another matter. It's very, very hard to get that right. Well, the placement of these trees does sort of match what Hugh is uh, showing in his plan. We've kind of altered some things so we can actually sort of see some of the, you know, some of the architecture. Uh, one of the things in this uh, rendering that is not entirely accurate is, is basically the height of the retaining wall. Uh, we had a hard time getting that. Um, it looks like uh, that retaining wall is about five feet tall, as you can ascertain from the people on the sidewalk. It's called all it's tall. Next slide, please. And again, like color here, it's merely a representation. We haven't landed like uh, you know what color we're planning to use here. So this is the rendering, um, you know, from State Street. Um, you can see a door right there, front and center. Um, this is uh, what's going to be the main entrance from a, a unit that is on the corner high. And stay back off the right there. That's that's our carriage house, which is sort of standalone unit. You know, two stories where the second floor is underneath the uh, mansard roof. Again, try to do our best to kind of accurately represent you know what he was showing in his landscape plans, but um, uh, that was kind of difficult to do. And our, our two dimensional drawings of the elevations not quite as exciting as the renderings, but. Um, you know, the drawing uh, on the bottom there, um, that's our view from High Street. You know, off to the left, uh, that is going to be the primary entrance for High Street for our unit. Um, at the end, uh, we've got a door in the middle. That's another primary entrance for a middle, kind of like landlocked unit. Uh, that unit in the middle uh, will have some, which you'll see in a, in a minute, uh, in Hughes plans. We'll have some outdoor space in front of that on the high street side. And we've got a wraparound porch here, uh, which is dedicated to that, um, you know, that uh, unit there on the corner. And of course, uh, you know, we've got uh, kind of an angled window bay there, which, uh, you know, um, is a little bit of a feature and that's facing, you know, kind of the, uh, the intersection. Um, elevation on top is, as you would see this from, from State Street. Uh, we've got a door there. This is the, uh, intended to be <clears throat> the primary entrance for that sort of premium corner unit. And off to the right there in the upper right hand corner, uh, you know, uh, that's the massing for our two car garages. So that window there on the first floor uh, was behind that window was actually the uh, two car garage for this particular unit. Next slide. Uh, up on the top, this is the view of the back of this from the parking court. 
Um, you know, get some arched, arched openings there, uh, which form a little niche. Uh, and those are actually sort of doors to the, um, uh, within that niche are doors to the uh, garage spaces. And then immediately uh, on the second floor there, you see a roof terrace, um, which is sort of bracketed by, uh, you know, a second uh, floor structure on either side to kind of create a little bit of privacy there. Uh, so the challenge we had with this sort of middle unit is it really creates quality outdoor space. So this is our solution, you know, to create sort of a very private, you know, second floor uh, terrace space for them. And immediately above that, you'll see some, you know, curious uh, fence-like enclosures, you know, at the roof level. And this is where we're intending to put, you know, all of our outdoor mechanical. So, uh, there is really no place to, you know, put it on the site at the ground floor. <laughs> and um, drawing at the bottom, this is how you would see the building left side. Now, uh, this is the side that faces the abutting property, you know, owned by Stephanie and, and Novak. Uh, we've got an entrance there in the middle, which is really a secondary entrance into the structure. And that also leads to sort of a, you know, kind of a, space there that's sort of like embedded in, into the hill. And of course, off to the left there, we've got a, uh, you know, that's the massing for our garages, which do have uh, living space. And this is our carriage house, you know, on the bottom, as, as you would see it from, from State Street, you know, uh, these folks will also have a, an outdoor area at, at grade level. Um, you know, we've, uh, have immediately in front of this, we have a plan for kind of retain wall and a heavy landscaping screen. So, um, so I don't think at the end of the day you're really going to see the building like you know like this because it's uh, intended to be somewhat private. And on top, that's the view from the parking board off to the left there. So, you know, two car two car garage and and the main entrance for the unit there. You can see some columns with a little cover, you know, cover entry entry. Uh, way, which is uh, tucked in the corner there. Next slide, please. And these may look a little odd, but um, this is a building that's actually buried, you know, buried into the hill, which is why these two elevations look very, you know, very odd. <laughs> now on the, on the bottom, you know, this is that, you know, as you would view the uh, structure from the immediate abutting property at, I think it's 109, Marge and Peter's property at 109 State Street. Again, embedded into the hill, and uh, drawing at the top, um, uh, this is a um, design where it has all the living space at the ground floor level, bedrooms at the second floor level. We create a little bit of a private, um, you know, outdoor patio area tucked in the way back corner of the site. And this is a door leading to the, you know, find that door where there's either this room. Next slide, please. This is a graphic that we, you know, um, you know, we've included because I think early on there's questions about, you know, you know, how we were changing grade, how much we were changing grade. And and um, so this is, you know, shows our structures, you know, relative to the proposed grade, I mean the existing grade, which is sort of in a blue line there. And really what we've tried to do is sort of like split the difference between, you know, elevating the site a little bit. And we've elevated the site to, to do for, for two reasons. One, we needed to create some, some um, you know, positive drainage in the parking court. And also we wanted to kind of uh, take the sting out of like, the retaining walls in the back. So we elevated it a little bit, but, um, you know, not, not too much for those two reasons. Next slide, please. And um, just to look at, you know, kind of what we were, you know, planning to use for materials here. Uh, we're planning to use sort of a synthetic, a slate new shingle, which we've used successfully a couple times, you know, here in Newburyport. And, uh, most recently at our new project at the bottom of Market Street, 2 to 6 Market Street. You know, that has a, a synthetic slate new shingle. Planning to use the same product here. 
as well, uh, using a mixture of different, um, you know, rot resistant materials. You know, uh, there's a lot of different products out there these days, uh, like this new product in the bottom right called Acre, uh, which is environmentally friendly and made with mice husks. And, uh, you know, cuts well, holds paint well, and, and uh, but there's a right, right place to use it and a wrong place for that. So we're mixing and matching, you know, in terms of using rock resistant materials everywhere. We're planning to have some copper roofs, uh, you know, uh, ship left siding to the channel bevel product. And um, yeah, so right now planning to use sort of a high quality aluminum clad wood window, mostly double homes, traditional double homes. <coughs> but I'm also hoping to maybe convince uh, my clients that we, uh, should be using wood simply because wood windows have taken care of property in their outlet. And uh, next slide, please. And so, with that, I'm going to hand it over to, to Hugh here, which will kind of walk you guys through what we're planning to do with the landscape. I'm not sure who's in charge of the Andy right there. Andy's in charge over here. Here's the guy. <laughs> you just if you want the question. Okay. Um, so here's the overall site plan. What we tried to do is create green space totally surrounding uh, the structures. So from whatever angle you're looking in uh, into the building project, we're uh, we're creating green. Uh, you probably noticed in some of the photographs that Scott prepared um, and showed you earlier, uh, some of the structures that he showed had no trees. And the buildings looked like they were jumping up into the sky. In order to bring that visual image down, um, you have to plant trees around it. That's what we've done here. Uh, so surrounding uh, the structure of High Street and State Street, we're, we're proposing a mixture of flowering trees and maybe incorporating some shade trees um, in that whole, that whole region. Um, the entrances to the garages, uh, you can see we tried to keep the pavement area to a minimum and have just a single entrance into the property. At one time, we were considering a double entrance, one from High Street and one from State Street. That took up both landscape space. Landscape designers didn't like that. So um, um, we got a single entrance, good functionality, getting in and out of garages, the garage, plenty of room to enter the property and depart from the property and the two cars coming in. There'll be a formal entrance at, at the State Street entrance. By formal, I mean a couple of stone pillars flanked by stone walls and enhanced with, uh, with plantings. Let's see. Um, there's a circulation pattern, a pedestrian pattern. Uh, the owners of the units so they can get around the thing and have outdoor living spaces as well. Each unit has its own outdoor patio. Try to make it as private as, as possible. You can see off the two doors there on the top, there are steps uh, leading down to a small patio. Um, this illustrates some of the retaining walls that Scott was talking about. You can see where even this structure, not only the um, terrace house, but this main structure is set down um, at a lower plane than the grade uh, between the building and Stephanie and Novak's house, which is further up. And that whole zone up there will be planted um, up in that region uh, for privacy. So we're, we're trying to create privacy screening surrounding the whole perimeter uh, to be of as little impact as possible uh, to the abutters. Uh, the landscape lighting, um, I think there's another slide that I show. Maybe two more. Yeah, so all those little dots you see there uh, represent lights. And although it looks like a lot, um, it's really just some enhancement lighting 
showing some of the facade of the walls, the buildings, walkway lights, which would be little mushroom lights. So people on foot can get around the building safely and lights that are built into the masonry to uh, light up steps uh, getting from one elevation to another. And there'll be a couple of post lanterns, maybe three or four post lanterns. It would not be unlike um, the ones you see downtown. And I don't know what the name of that cave is of Valley of the Hidden Trees, uh, where there's a pond. What's the name of that building? The Open House. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are post lanterns there, and I'm envisioning uh, one per unit uh, of that, that style. I don't have a photograph of it, but something very much in keeping with uh, with Newbury Port and what you might see here. Always very concerned about flooding, uh, too much light. Um, all of the lighting would be low profile and nothing in your face, nothing shooting up into the sky. Uh, just some enhancement lighting and functional lighting. That's a little sketch that I prepared early on. And you can see, I think, on especially the bottom one, we have some trees. You can see how that has a tendency to draw the um, structure into the ground, rather than just having a building uh, emerging. And Entrance, you can see the car in between the two buildings. It'll be low profile entrance, a couple of stone pillars, maybe enhanced with some lighting. I'm not sure if we're going to do any kind of signage saying just, just street numbers on that. I think that's about it. Maybe see what we have for another image. In case I missed anything. Just for so, yeah. okay. I think that's it. Any questions? I'd glad to answer. I'm just finish out that one. Yeah. Just on the uh, stairs to the left there, the uh, old plan or, or the new plan? So you're entering from the high street. That, uh, that's current plan. And uh, it gets you up to um, two of the residences, two of those units. Okay. So I just wanted to say a couple of to say in the beginning. Um, first, there are no basements in these units. Uh, we're prohibited from having basements, so that you know that. Um, as Scott and Hugh pointed out, there is only one egress for vehicles, and that's on State Street. Um, we have an agreement with the city not to have one on High Street. So, I'm um, and with that, we'd love to hear um, love to hear your comments. Uh, suggestions and um, you know what, whatever what you think, you know, and we can answer any questions. Oh, just, yeah. just just one one question. I I um, see that you 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 did a calculation for the uh, frontage setback and so forth. Yes. And so you use the the two adjacent on either side. I didn't check the math, but that. So you yeah, did so that we, math and it came up. 14. So it's fourteen point. Uh, it's actually fourteen point nine, but yeah. we're uh, it's fourteen point four, but we're fourteen point nine. Right. Okay. So we're further back. So that is right. that, that is how the calculation came. Yeah, up. I would have to double check with the engineer <laughs> on that, but yeah, and Jennifer Jennifer approved it. So yeah. Yeah. okay, I was wondering if yeah, Jennifer will get. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. No no no. We had to do a request for determination like we always do, so she checked it. Out. I, I mean, frankly. You know, if the neighbors could have us move it forward more closer to State Street, they would have, but we can't. I mean, for obvious reasons, we can't. So. Questions? Comments? So, just maybe, uh, I think you alluded to drainage. I'm just curious. So yeah. You have to address with the neighbors, and it sounds like perhaps it was addressed with the landscaping. I would imagine that's going to be. Important consideration and question, and, and we are actually having a stormwater peer review done. So with the with the zoning board, um, well, they haven't got the stormwater letter yet, but they will have it. They have our existing conditions plans, <clears throat> which we have on here. The existing conditions plans, the existing topography, 
as well. So you'll see the, at the front of the driveway, you see that kind of, that right there, that's a drainage, that's okay. drainage, right? So there's all sheet yeah. flow into that, but that's, those are all pervious pavers, right? So everything's taken care of on site. Um, we did, um, Hugh and Scott and the engineers are um, paying particular attention to, and if you go up to the, the north um, east corner, um, so we are paying particular attention to um, the line along uh, Stephanie Novak's property there and what happens and how that's all impacted. So that's all addressed in the, um, in the report. We, we've taken great care not to cut into the ridge, right? So the landscaping up there is going to change because, you know, frankly, it's, I think it's a mess on, on this property, right? So it's going to change, but, you know, I think if you asked our clients and Hugh right now, they would like to just cut two or three feet off and that would be great, right? But we're making every effort not to do that. So um, we've made, we're taking great pains, particularly in that area, to watch what happens. Right. And that's all that will be, re be reviewed by So I think you answered the question I had about material. And then the yes. drive was going to be right. Pervious. 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 Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, at least I mentioned the stormwater sort of report is, is in progress. But we have really actually sort of aspect that on the site really well, well draining soils. Um, so we think we're going to be able to bring all of the roof runoff. And uh, all of the runoff to this sort of, you know, pervious, uh, like, yes, yeah. planning on using right. permeable, hey, bituminous. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. permeable, yes. Yes. Okay. yes, yes. And we think we can bring it all to the drive so. solve all the issues. Uh, I, go ahead, go ahead. I just, I wonder if you could put up the, uh, Couple of the last landscape ones, the elevation one. Could could you talk a little bit more about the, the height of the wall around the, the site on, on both High Street and State Street? It looks like from the top drawing that the green edge, which is outside of that, close to the to the street, has, also has a significant slope to it. So could, could you walk us through that in a little bit more detail? Yeah, it's, it's not a significant slope. It's probably two foot grade differential between sidewalk and base of the wall, perhaps around on the high street side and the street side. The stone wall is no, uh, it's going to be less than 10 feet high. Um, and the grade differential between the sidewalk and the top of that. Somewhere around six feet. So it's just a little green grass uh, space that's going to wrap that corner, get, get good visibility for people coming into that intersection so they can look kind of through without obstruction. And it'll be all low profile, just, just long. But the slope is. Uh, I think it's, I mean, if I'm reading the drawings correctly, you, you've broken the. Elevation difference between sidewalk and ground floor elevation into three pieces. One is that sloping green area, one is the stone wall, and then the elevation, there's a transition up and into the ground floor. Which I think is the right idea. And I, I think what you just said, um, you know, perhaps your ability to kind of see across that snow yeah. in the sidewalk. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's really important. I do too. And, and if it's six feet, I'm not sure that's that's the reality of it. it uh, the walls are set back off that corner quite a lot. If you go back to the site plan, you can see it's probably about 18 feet there. So if you go to the corner of the intersection of High Street and State, and you come off of that rounded end of that stone wall there, that's a that's a lot of a lot of space. I don't know exactly. So you can see through that zone, but you can't see at, at the top elevation. That's at the top of, elevation, the largest. Bob, should we take a look at the rendition? Maybe that. I'd like to see the two. <laughs> Love it. 
I think we should hear the rendering is an action. Yeah, it's it's I know, but it's, it's the idea is there. Yeah, sidewalk slope and then um, okay. I think the other go to the lower elevation on this drawing and go to the right the right hand side of it. There you go. That's the corner of State and I from mm -hmm. High Street. So the visibility around that corner would be should be excellent. Is there any potential for seating or anything at that corner? Seating? The public I, 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 nice to have a little park bench there. <laughs> yeah. I think there is an opportunity there. <laughs> Not that I will we'll spend my time. <laughs> <laughs> talk to the clients about oh, no. the seating on the front. Did you go to the um, site lighting plan? Here, and zoom in on the driveway a little bit. So uh, it's not so much the lighting I'm thinking of here, although I do see that it looks like the couple of lighting fixtures are outside. But what I'm more concerned about looking at this, looking at the the elevation from the state street side is the placement of those pillars um, at the driveway entrance. And I'm working particularly because the one on the left is really not function, it's not functional stacked, you know, because the wall just stands there. I think maybe you could pull those pillars back a little bit from the property line to get better sight lines for vehicles exiting the driveway. And I think and yet on, the, on the left side it's easy. You just Take that little stub of wall and push it back. On the right side, it might be, you know, angling that. You want to keep the private space for the carriage. You do, but I think we could. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be my one recommendation. There is to okay. is to pull those back from the street mm -hmm. uh, so that you don't interfere with sight lines. Even though they're, even though when you look at the elevation, the car windows look like they're above that, but still, any little in, impediment to vision, I think, if this, if there's somebody. Little kid walking down the street. Yeah. Okay. And the, the wall on the on the um, the back side is approximately looks like it's about seven feet. Is that about right? Yes. The uh, the, the, the rounded the part. The other side going going to the left. There. No. Going back. Going to the left. <laughs> That's it looks like 67 to 74. It's about to change. It steps down. Uh, you see what the railing is on top of the wall, on the radius yep. of the wall. Yep. And then it extends to the left, a couple of seg segments. Yep. At that point, the wall steps down, I think, 12 or 18 inches. Okay. And it goes a little bit further and steps down again. It's just a series of steps that goes all the way across until you get to about a three foot high wall at the end. And is the function of that break? To get get into work on landscaping in there, or is it drainage? Or uh, it's just unnecessary. You don't need. It's not retained. So it disappears into the into yeah. The... Just comes into uh, kind of the yeah. new building. So we tried to preserve that whole that whole stretch of grading, minimal to no no grading. And it looks like the um, the end of the parking area is about 67. The whole walkway and patio is about 67. All, all flat. You have to come up the stairs from the high street. The high street. Otherwise, it's all the idea to build a level platform that the building's onto. Yeah. We skip over to the next. Um, one of the next plans, there's a specific planting plan for that, that area. You can see that upper area there. We're trying to create a vegetative, somewhat natural vegetative barrier, visual barrier between properties. Uh, and then preservation of that flow um, gets the plantings up that much higher, so maybe even more, more concealment. But uh, but we basically in the total evergreen expanse there, the, the side of the project buildings 
um, the ornamental plantings, the salias, or the So those those plantings on that level are really starting almost at the second floor. Can you uh, close to second, second you no, know? no. It'd be about four feet up. I think it's about elevation 72. Okay. And the grade around the building is 67. Four or five feet up. I had missed what the siding material was again. It's a uh, polyash product. It's a channel that ship. This is where I'm bit maybe some wood or some polyash. So it's recycled coal ash. <laughs> yeah, cool. It's a pretty good. It's, Sturdy good product. We use it a lot. With the grain, it's got a natural grain to yeah. it. It's um, we actually used it. I've used it. It's yeah. And you paint it, and it's nice. Okay. Just uh, one one technical question, and, and then one comment on the presentation. Um, could could you again just walk through the the, the site drainage? Because I'm I'm thinking about the nature of this site, and, you know, the hazardous condition. You're built up above that, but talking about pervious materials in the parking area and drainage through that. And how, how, did, how does that work? So let's be clear that the site is clean. Mm -hmm. um, it has a, it has a restriction on it because that's what global does. And they don't want, we had to get the residential restriction lifted, which was a big deal. Okay. Um, but there's a restriction not to do a basement because they don't want to ever have an issue. No right? occupied space. Right. No occupied yeah. space. Not right. Dirty. So it's not dirty. But it's not capped. Um, no, it's not capped. No. Not so but, you, can, you can allow drainage down into that. Correct. So, so that answers that question. Yeah. Just in terms of the presentation. Um, the, the, the question about the height of the wall and, and the appearance of the building, both in terms of the, the overall high street elevation and the overall state street elevation. I think, you know, when I looked at your, your architectural building elevations, they sort of started at, you know, at that upper elevation and, and then showed the building. I think it would be very helpful to do drawings that show those elevations in the real overall site context. So you see that transition down to street level grade. And, and although it's probably an enormous amount of work, I would love to see a street wall elevation that put this building in context with at least a couple of the adjacent residential buildings, just that's so you can kind of see that overall. <laughs> That, that's a lot of work, but I think there, there may be questions as you go forward about, you know, what this really feels like in terms of the overall yeah. environment. I think that's a good point. We can clean some of that up in, in, in a way. Um, that is why we included that sketch from Hugh at the last that sort of hand because that is trying to do your best. Or I think, you know, with our drawings, my drawings, I think we can capture some. So it would be good to see the, yeah. the rest of the site. Yeah, I think that's an excellent idea. What? Anything else? I don't know much about the chair. I'm not going to add this here. The chair, the window. I'm sorry, it was going to be a little bit. But that's really, the planning board is really, I think, is more of a sound trip. You know, unless we're, unless we're in a situation where we're and they are not overly distant. Yeah. You know, it's like this, you know, you know, yeah. Okay, well, that's, that's, uh, that's those of our feedback. That's really, really helpful. We really appreciate it. Um, and we'll take that back and probably revise the presentation of materials. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. 
Um, it's not a public hearing. You wanted to say something? Uh, Mr. Chair, I understand it's not a public hearing. It has been suggested to me, you know, by the report that you do have the discretion and you wanted to hear. But I understand you have to do so. Well, but I raised my hand. If you have a brief comment, that would be. If you have a brief comment, that would be. Stephanie Nickitich, 93 High Street. Um, because the planning board asked not to be the SPGA um, for this development, I think that, that my husband and I and many of the abutters were sort of confused about why this was happening and should we be here. And I did point out to everybody that they, it is not a public. Um, so what we're doing is preparing written comment and other materials for the ZBA. Some of the materials we're preparing are um, reading modeling of um, the buildings uh, in the context of other buildings in the neighborhood. So, Mr. Coop had asked about. So I completely agree with Attorney Mead. This development is extremely um, high profile and important to this entire city. And it's important that it so some of um, some of my concerns um, are with the major grade changes and range, um, and as um, Attorney Mead pointed out, they will be getting a peer review. On that. Um, the the plans do kind of push the envelope on some of the dimensional calls. Um, so it's important, I think, especially since we've had experiences in Newbury. The dimensions on plans are not exact, but the dimensions that somebody has built are that um, that there there be some kind of confirmation of what what the dimensions of the plans are, including relative room heights. Um, my husband, who has been working, who's the person who's been working on three D modeling for months now with each iteration of the plan, um, thinks there are some. You know that there are some differences between what plans are and what is really happening. So it's just a, a peer confirmation of what those plans are showing. Um, the hardscaping, um, it's, it, it, there are extensive retaining and decorative, call them that, walls without any engineering plans, which would be particularly of concern to us um, for the functional retaining. There should be some sort of plans which tell you what the, you know, how they're going to be installed, what the composition is, whatever it is that engineers like to see when you have functioning containers. Um, the landscaping, um, we think that it is aggressive on the high street side, the landscaping and the hardscaping, uh, aggressive on our side, the, the boundary to our property. Um, so it is not fully defined yet, landscaping part. Um, if we think it will raise maintenance issues. And um, so we have several concerns about this, which we are and have been still up until yesterday in touch with the uh, developer. So those are, we are preparing much, we will be much more extensive with the special permit grant. Um, Thank you. Are we done? Done? Then we move on to the next item. Um, she is uh, the reserve at the National Farm, the credit for the bonds. Yes. Um, Mr. Chair, it's me, me, Tom Cross, 30 Green Street, same person I was. Things can change. They can. Uh, and with me this evening is Jonathan Miller, who's one of the managers on the project. I'm here on behalf of the Zork Fashion. You'll see 
And um, we are looking for our uh, the release of the $72,000 bond that the city has been holding for uh, a little while. Um, last year, the project received its certificate of compliance from the Conservation Commission. Um, we had submitted a, an as-built plan in the fall and then needed to get some more data. A lot of things got in the way, not of the data, but work. Um, and so we submitted a new as-built plan uh, that responded to some of the comments that the peer review engineer had had. He had some other comments that we have since also addressed. Um, and I believe now, as a result, the as-built plan meets the peer review requirement, uh, engineer's requirements, and importantly, the planning board rules and regulation requirements. Um, and we'd like the board to vote to release the, the bond. So I look around this table, I don't know that anybody, except for maybe Alden, was on this project. Were you here, Drip? I, I seconded the motion to approve it. There you go. <laughs> I wasn't in my project originally, so <laughs> forgive my- uh, I didn't know that until I looked back at the decisions. <laughs> but there, you didn't see my name. <laughs> anyway, so um, we're looking to release the bond um, now that it's uh, ready to go. Any well, just just a question, Zach, because I know there were there were some concerns and from just the feedback from Andy is do you agree that those things have been met? All of those we received on the email actually late today. Oh, I haven't seen it. Yeah, and I actually just saw it before I came here to the meeting. So um he had indicated to us and I, and we didn't even have a chance to go any further with it. So um yes. Yeah. So let me, while well, Andy's pulling that up, so I replied to Andy, but I took all of you off because you shouldn't have been on um, for other reasons. And <laughs> I left. Her. Okay. So just so you know, I, I you know, so. Yeah. Uh, so these are, well, Christian said it's at the end of this email late to me, and I just see a here. So we didn't have a chance to distribute it to anybody or anything. So. so he knows a couple of other comments in here. At the end, he says he doesn't recommend it. I, before we had a discussion, I didn't so quite. My uh, biggest concerns, to be clear, for myself, my biggest concerns were that we have a statement from the uh, applicant indicating that they were installed properly. We have that here um, from the recent letter that we received a day ago. Pardon me. The letter just indicating that things have been built according to that's the right from the contractor. That's right. correct. Um, and then the other thing was just any um, detail on the ad book plans and this concern. So it just to make sure we get a version of the ad book plan. Mainly so that our engineering department has that for three million properties whenever we're talking to the police uh, around the field. So I and I, after I saw this email from Phil, I came up with my own list. I think there are a number of things in the edge build plan that are missing and some things that are just wrong. And so I, I really want to sit down with engineering and hopefully with Bill um, to just figure out, you know, where are things one of the there's a there's a bunch of things with lot 10. There's just, there are lot lines missing from three sides of lot 10. Sewer force name is shown on the Proof plan is not shown in the ESDO. Um, there's a utility pole shown in the middle of the house, which probably isn't there. Um, there are some, some sewer services issues. I've got some easement questions um, in terms of utility easements. So I think we just, there's just a bunch of stuff that is well, not there. But, so I'd like, I mean, I'd like to know that. Right. Our engineer has, you know, has gone back and forth with Phil many times. and. So, you know, he double checked everything after Phil said it. So I'd really like to know your written yeah, comments. Yeah, I mean, so Phil and Phil has his written comments too. So. But, but I didn't, right, I've seen Phil's comments. So I, I would like to address the gas main issue though, if I could. So your regulations require us to put on your plans, municipal services. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. That's what we put on this plan, municipal utilities, right? And I might add that with all due respect to Phil, and I've worked with Phil for 20 years, he approves and you approve the Port Place subdivision plan. That's Evergreen, the Evergreen. 
And it doesn't show the gas facilities, right? It shows water and sewer and storm drain. That's what it shows. Because that's what you require to solve. So the fact that he now all of a sudden wants us to put the gas mains on, which by the way, we didn't construct, right? Is it's not part of your regulation. So I'm happy to address your other issues, um, which I'm not familiar with, but um, the gas main stuff is silly for us to go back and forth on because it's not part of your regulations and it's not been required. Even by Phil did the review of Port Place. Yeah. Right. But, but there are some things that are really important. And that's you know, fine. I'd like to have the list so we can give it to yeah. our engineer to make sure that they've addressed it because they he's gone back and forth with Phil, so I'm, I'd like to know that. And, we need, and I think we need to have a, instead of have doing it back and forth with emails, we need to figure you sit down and talk about this. Yeah. Well, then maybe I can get Matt in that meeting, right? I, I was thinking it would probably be good for us to do this at least one person uh, from public service is just make sure that there's no ambiguity or business being made about it and we can all be done with one, you know, discussion. Right. Right. Um, so, um, what we suggest we pull in probably. I think John Eric should come in because, you know, this was all constructed in 2020 and 2021, right? So there was a there was a lot of stuff happening in 2020, 2021, but it's all been inspected by the city. I mean, it has all been inspected by the city. So I'm happy. I think you're right, Rick. Obviously, if there's a utility pole that you know we missed in the middle of a house, then it doesn't belong there. Um, so if we could, if we could get Matt in on that conversation because I think that's the most efficient and way. Who's Matt? Our engineer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, wasn't, he didn't actually certify the, 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 the completion, it was the contract. Was the contract did, it. right. Matt didn't oversee that. He wasn't out there seeing the, right, right. So he couldn't make that certification, right. Assuming you might maybe able to make yourself available. Yeah, and I think that, I think it would be great to, to, the best thing would be to have a letter, a letter from someone, whether it's from you or that is everybody's comments consolidated. Yeah, I quite frankly, right. I agree with that notion 100%. What is what I'm not able to provide here? So, we have this sort of you know, more recent feedback from Phil, having seen you know, some stuff. Um, we have it that you just mentioned. Uh, I have not heard back in public service that they have anything else they want to add to this. So, we're in the um, And I agree 100%. Very simple, straightforward list of one of the things. And, and, and hopefully, it will be a letter from somebody here, whether it's again, whether it's you or whether it's Bill. To the applicant. I'm happy to provide that. And I would like to say, you know, these are the things that we'd like to add to the plan and the bigger discussion, you know, et cetera. And then if those things are revised and addressed and revised data on it and come back yeah, and absolutely. that address concerns. Um, I don't know whether or not John Barry or Bill or uh, Wayne would have anything else they would want to add or adjust about the plan um, itself. We do know we've heard most recently this afternoon from Bill, and yeah, uh, we talked to him. So if we could, we, if we could set up a meeting. As, I guess. Yeah, and then, then we can turn it around as quickly as we can. If you're able to suggest a good conversation, you can sort of back to the Yeah, I don't, I don't need to be a part of that meeting, but I'll get Matt. Yeah, yeah. whatever way, if you want to check. Just let us know he's available. I, yeah. I mean, if you like, if you guys want to immediately go and uh, copy Wayne and John Eric and speed up, let's try to schedule. I don't know. I've been copying John Eric on everything and I've forgot from him yet. <laughs> well, yeah, so, and that's why I say Wayne. Uh, so we, yeah. Yeah. So we'll put Wayne on there. That's and, and I would uh, I would suggest also really in which the he gets you guys together that we could just make sure everybody can say room. Uh, yeah. So. I, 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 I don't myself. We want the plan to be right, right? We're just trying to get you what you need. But I'm not going to put stuff on there that I'm not required to put on there either. So and guess how. Um, yeah, I don't personally if you I don't like I don't have a strong preference as to have it easier in person for a lot of these reasons. Um, but if for some reason somebody can't attend in person, we can just record that. But I would quite easier if we can obviously. Yeah, I think if you're all around the table, that's really what yeah. should happen. That's easier. Yeah. So we won't continue this to the next meeting because by the time, if you meet next week, even I don't think the changes will be made. But we don't need to continue it anyway. It's not here. So we'll just get back on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good. Was there anything else? Did anybody have any other concerns besides your list? And I, and I was just. My list, frankly, is seeing seeing Phil stuff. I mean, I've looked at the plan and just did as much as I could. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and I just saw some of the part that we 
meeting, so I will push that over to you. Yeah, you could, that'd be great. I, I'm assuming that's uh, what we have from, because you saw the prior comment. I'm assuming that's what we have from him. That is just a question of beyond uh, from Rick mentioned right. Bill's email here today. What else we may have, if anything, from public service? Yep. All right. Thank you. Yes. You're done. Okay, next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the May 15th meeting. Uh, I made some comments. Yeah, yeah. Uh, does anybody have any comments? Okay, uh, okay. we would accept a motion to approve the minutes. Move to approve the 515 meeting minutes. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Thank you, Philip. Oh, you, you're recusing. You're yeah. So four, four to nothing. Exception. And uh, next item on the agenda is discussion under the MBTA community zoning. I think that's not a plan. Yeah. No. Right. To further dialogue or investigation. So the, the council is meeting on the night to hopefully as a committee anyway, most of this is quite a committee. This is um, something I'd like to over a lot. So the committee meeting. Sorry, the yeah. so, supposed to be there. Was that what your email suggested? Uh no, you don't need to be there for the one the one by nature that's totally something. Yeah. Um, on the 10th, we have our hearing or the zoning change that it simply implicates that whether that they can have that motion accept. So that is a hearing and it is unusual because it would be here at that point we back at City Hall when we used to meet years ago uh, in the capital chamber for the city capital there. Um, so that's what you want us to cover. That yes, it's uh it's long story short. Yeah. Uh so six PM, it would certainly not go any longer than seven because that's when the council starting the regular September meeting. And I, I don't personally do this with really this probably do at that point, but uh, I think we'd be done shortly about that. But it's just a question of zoning. Uh, also, speak to that. And can you um, send a reminder to everybody on the Yeah, are you meeting everybody? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Monday, six o'clock. Sorry? Monday, six o'clock. Monday. Six to seven. And at the city hall. This is a little dumb. We get to try to try Again, right? So we're meeting at what we wouldn't normally have to meet the bowl. So, like, at the end of the day, it might be a good question. But we must have seen this time as before. It's not a big deal. All right. We need at least four people. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's uh, it's important because you're having, you're, it's technically, it's a hearing. It's not the only meeting about that. Like, if you're having some phone hearing, so that's in person. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And as you've mentioned, you're canceling the 19th meeting. Meeting on the 19th by Juneteenth. Uh, so, uh, enjoy it. We, after next week, we get together on July 17th. Which does give you plenty of time to grab city events. If you think about it, as I was saying, think about the 40 year district guidelines or anything else like a 15 or like one, you know. And, uh, Additions or changes that we can make to the design standards, for instance, that doesn't even, although here, right, we're specifically in this time, we're talking about the point of district, it could also apply to the place you're having it. So bring your ideas for that. The sooner we have your ideas, we have the easier we can incorporate in the new zoning. So, um, you know, just some zoning out there. <laughs> uh, but, you know, bring your thoughts what you like, what you don't like. Some district of the point or even thinking about Sriana, you know, we're gonna go with that and then get your thoughts on what should be added or changed due to that standard. We're not really generally talking about spatial change because we're talking about the design of the space. Um, so what we could have made reason that it could be problematic because of space setbacks were tight enough to be like covering. Changing could 
So that, that then you start looking at that and say, maybe there should be an asset plan in the area, which just gets us back to the story of the research. Oh, and that I mentioned in so of your interest in coming Friday, the Harvard High School students that did, they did like first year, the first year they had to do what's they put together. Some of it's on the financials and other things. Some of it's just the primary research. I think that they picked up a couple of images of sort of 
shut them back up like they would in the it's, it's progressive because it's using their you know gas station things like you guys are doing but but it does kind of capture that well but um, but the financial stuff so I hate to ask this question but um what is this what's the timeline for the consulting projects? So we're dumping the payment up until summer. We're almost in the, we're almost in summer. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be some groundwork that's happening for with the consultant and with us uh, on the planning board end, um, and with uh, the zoning advisory group before we can pull in over the consultant. So, in fall, okay. um, again, bring your thoughts. So, I don't know whether anything will be sooner, you know. Dangerous. Because we're in the throes of beginning the study of Story Avenue in September. Probably not a good time for somebody to come with a plane. Yeah, I can imagine it would be hard to just see it all together. Two thirds. Yeah. 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 Anything else? Uh, well, I just want to let everybody know that Jeff Delat is going to resign from the board um, effective August 1st. She'll be here at our meeting next Monday, I believe, and also the 17th. So we are going to be down in person and contact, I'll contact Brian and Jen to decide whether they want to put their names in the meeting. Yeah, she did a She's going to don't know the sheet, but I know she has not yet today when she was emailing me, she said, should I still stay with August first? Okay. 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 Move to adjourn. <laughs> All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs>